<laughs> Hi everybody, I'm Hannah. Hi, I'm Pam. Hi, I'm Anne. Hi, I'm Kate. It's Kate, I'm Marie, and we are coming to you live from Austin, Texas because it's Happy Wooly Wednesday and Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> Thank you for being here, everyone. We really hope we're live. We know that we're probably just a few minutes late. We're super excited to spend three days with Kate Kaprowski of Handicraft Kate. And in just a few minutes, you're going to get to ask her some questions. And you brought some show and tells too, mm -hmm. Lucia. I did. We are so excited. And I'm excited to learn from her. We have some community members joining us too. These gals are dressed in pink and red for us today. <laughs> Thank you very much. And so, have you guys been busy? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. What's the big excitement for the week? Are we having a workshop here? <laughs> is, that, is that happening this We've week? We've pretty much been like chomping at the bit since we booked this. So Kate's here with her mom even and visiting yeah. family. So yes. we're going to spend a little time with her and we're ready to get started. So thank you for being with us. Thank you everyone. Happy Valentine's Day. I'm going to refresh my screen and hopefully you can see us. Um, are we live? Anne's giving me the thumbs up that we are live. I am going to unpin my previous post. If you are joining us for the first time, you will see that people are checking in and saying hi and where they're from. So we are Living Felt Felting Supplies based in Austin, Texas. As you will see from the people posting with us today, we have friends all over the world. So I'm going to say hi to a few people. We have Paula who's in Mexico. We have Sherry who is in Maryland. Um, we also have, oh, I'm trying to close my Pandora. We have Tammy all the way from Oregon. Laura, hi, up there in Massachusetts. It's so nice to see you all. Thanks for being here with us on Valentine's Day. And I'm so grateful that Kate was able to break away for Valentine's Day too. We are very excited and I'm so glad that you all could be here with us. Before we get started, I want to do some show and tells with you all. And um, we have just always, somehow, you bless us with gifts and treasures and thinking about us. And we want to do a special shout out to Joanne Stratikos of Mudworks Pottery. Some of you know she has been felting these bunnies since she got her Color Me Happy bundle. And she went into surgery today for a knee replacement and is out, right? She let us know she's out. She's uh, on the broadcast. She chimed in. Joanne, you're here? Yeah. <laughs> you crazy lady, you. I wanted to show you guys all this gift that Joanne gave me. Some of you know that I started sewing, like really trying to learn how to sew, not just dabbling. And Joanne, who sews also, and does pottery made me this sewing toolbox so it's like a needle pin cushion and then inside i can store things and such i don't know what i don't know what and this cute little like tinkerbell set of scissors that lives down there isn't that fun so sweet so thank you joanne and we're all thinking of you today and sending our best thoughts that you get super well super fast um, so i'm going to give a little heart to joanne Hi gals, oh it's so nice to see you all. There she is, very nice. Renee's in New Mexico. Let me do another show and tell with you all. Now you all maybe saw these in the group and this is another gift that I received. This one is from Sharon Denier. And let me grab her card. I'm losing my hair tie already. Sharon Denier made these hand turned, turned wood needle felting, felting needle holders. Um, and she stuffed some foam in there. Very, very clever. Now she says she makes wood and other things. I love turned wood. It's so sweet. And everyone is unique and different. And look how clever this is. On the bottom, she put a sticker listing all of our needles and the needle codes. So you know if you forget which needle to use for what. Isn't that smart? So let me show you. I want to show you her um, contact information. Um, it her she calls her business near and dear design not cute near near dear design does that show up Anne? okay i'm going to turn it over so y'all can see her etsy shop and her website which is near and dear design there okay so check that out she's selling these in her etsy shop now i don't know how much they are but it's a handcrafted item by someone in our community and thank you so much sharon for this sweet gift i'm going to keep it right here so that I have it. 
Mm -hmm. Hearts, hearts, hearts. I know. Aren't those fun? Irene. Irene says, love it. So what, since Irene says she loves it, why don't we make Irene next? I can't tell you all how just overwhelmed I am sometimes with these. I mean, I can't talk about it because I'll cry. Okay, so I want to show you this amazing kitty that Irene sent me. I mean, I did not know this was coming. Just look at this beautiful little spirit. I'm going to have to go back and show his little paw pads and his nose. Look at that coat. Can you see the coat, Ian? Mm -hmm. Isn't that beautiful blending? Um, and look at, look at the little paw pads right there. How cute are his little paw pads. His fluffy little whiskers sticking out and his little nose. This is so beautiful, Irene. I know. Everyone's like, wow. I know. You know what? Irene's going to come this year, too. She's coming for the bird workshop in August. So I'm so excited. Her and Erin Whalen are both be here at that same workshop. I mean, this kitty is just so gorgeous. And so we have him now up on a shelf near these the longer fibers. Though this looks like um, mushroom, doesn't it? I mean, is this mushroom merino top? That looks like mushroom. Or mocha, or one of those, or one of those guys. Anyway, I think Irene should come teach a kitty workshop, is what I think. <laughs> She's got a real job, but we would like that, Irene. If you want to come teach a kitty workshop, we'd be very glad to have you. <laughs> I feed you in everything. <laughs> I know, that's so, so awesome. Uh, let's see, I know I have, I have more to show. Oh, I, yes. Irene says that it is mushroom. It is mushroom. Yeah, I'm so happy when I know the colors that we have. <laughs> okay, I want to get to the kind of the bigger show and tell before we bring Kate on. These have been sitting here waiting for show and tells for, the, to, for us to get through the bird exhibit that we had. So that was an amazing couple of broadcasts. And then in the middle, we felt it our hearts together. So super fun to see all of your hearts that you made in the felt along and hopefully you'll um, post some more. Um, and so those are the ones we've made. But what I wanted to show you today are these amazing angel pictures from Barb Sackle. And um, she's in New York. And y'all might recall that she shares some of these in the group and we were all so amazed that she translated needlepoint designs into her felt works. So I'm going to bring each one up and then we'll just talk about them a little bit more so that you can see it up in super close detail. Let me know how we're doing, Anne. Can you see it? This way? Okay. Can you see, I don't know what you can see, I'll wait for it to show up, but can you see this like little ribbon treatment here? Those are locks that have been stretched out. So that little kinky part is locks. And don't you think she did such an amazing job on the shading underneath? Like you really get the flow of the dress, don't you think? Just gorgeous. Now she said that this background is black merino top because she wanted the black black. And our dark is like really black. And then she put the Angelina. Can you see the glitty? Look at look at this corner. Can you see that corner? A little bit, yeah. Where do I go? Um, if we could just... Yes. Yeah, right there. Isn't that smart? Like this huge angel and then this little town <laughs> below. You really get the sense. She says that a 42 triangle for her is really key. And I really love how she just brings together all different kinds of fibers to get the effect that she wants. You can see MC1 in here. You can see Merino top and locks. On one of them, like this is a yarn. And um, so up here on the wings, she used our MC1 cotton bat so that it was fluffy. But then under here, she used Merino top to get like a little more of that texture. We have a couple questions. Laura Burke wants to know, is this needle felt on a backing? It is. She uses, uh, okay, so this one is kind of, they're two different ones I'll show you. So this one is just like a very coarse wool that's been punched down. So it might have been a batting or it might have been a pre-felt of like a sort of a stiff or coarse fiber. And this other one is like on a felt. I don't know if it's a felt or a pre-felt, but it looks like a felt. 
Um, so this one is on like a felt background. I'll see up close. It might be like a pre-felt, but it's a it's a well-felted pre-felt if it's a, if it's a pre-felt. And so you could do these like on a felt background and see how loose they are. They would really be great framed or mounted in some way so that they're nice and stable. If you hang wool like this just on the wall, it tends to curl as it gains gains and loses moisture. It tends to curl and it loses some of its um, stateliness. But look at this beauty. Tell me if you can see this up close. I'm gonna turn it sideways. Can you see that? I'm gonna turn it sideways. It's cut. So the fibers have been cut. Can you see that? To give it the poofiness with the Angelina, help ah, me. Can you yeah. see that? How do I capture it? It's so smart. It's like, this is thinking outside the box. Anne's trying to help me. You see all the fibers are sticking up almost like you would do on a bunny or a, can you get it? Yes, you can see it, you can see it better. Where do I go? Well, let's see, I just gotta get up close. There you go, okay. I just want you to see that it's standing up you know, and she's got the Angelina blended in there. And look at the sweet detail on the faces. You know, she did the same thing in the hair there um, with like letting it stick straight up off the background and then cutting it so that you get that dimensionality and you get the poofiness. Let me see what else I can tell you, she said. Um, I think I covered it. She says, when you're working on a dark background and you want your whites or pastels to be pure, you have to put in a layer of white under the top layer so there's no shadowing. Oh, that's really smart. So like on the faces here where she had a dark background and she didn't want to lose the color, she says that she puts white underneath, underneath the pastel. That's really smart. That's really smart. All right, and Laura Burke wants to know, how would you mount them? You know what, Laura, we're, we, did a, we did a mounting show last year, but we're going to look at that again. So there's a couple of ways to mount a wall hanging, depending on how you need to prepare it for how you want to mount it. But to answer you in short, if you make it thin enough, you could wrap it around a canvas. If you don't want to do that, um, you can, there's a couple of quick ways to mount. One um, that we've shown in the past, if you want to just hang this on the wall, if that's your goal, just like it is, you can sew back here a thick cotton webbing, like an inch and a half or so, and then cut a hole in each end and run a dowel through that. If you do that though, you, can, you want to mount it well so it's not too heavy so the top doesn't curl down, and the bottoms might want to curl up, so you might want to weight the bottom with the same. Otherwise, you could do um, what I've done on some of my bigger, heavier ones, is instead of sewing webbing, I sew sew on Velcro. And then you can either have Velcro on the wall, or wood on the wall, or even a canvas, and then Velcro this right to that, onto the canvas. Does that make sense? Am I speaking clearly? <laughs> Sometimes I think I'm in my head. And Kate Williams also asked about those. Did she needle felt the Angelina? Yeah, yeah, but notice that it's blended with wool. And that's one of the things we said in the past is card, you know, hand, just hand card it together because you, the wool is going to act like a staple and hold it in place. Mm -hmm. So trying to needle felt the Angelina on its own is a little difficult. But even on something teeny tiny like our little model owl here, if you'll recall, we needle felted, does this show up, Anne? All these little neps in the Angelina were done just by grouping them all together and then poke out the wool and it'll trap everything else down. Okay. Doing good? We're doing good. Aren't those amazing? Can we just see a round of hearts for Barb and say thank you so much for sending those in so that we could show them and share them. And um, I promise that I'm going to be bringing more from Barb for you this year and especially great things for supporting uh, beginning needle filters. For now, I'm going to keep it a secret, but I'm just planting that seed to let you know. Um, really, really great stuff. And, and thanks to her. She's, if you want to see more of that, go ahead and search the group for Barb Sackle, S-A-C-K-E-L, and up will come some past posts that she shared, some basic steps of these works in process. Good? Good. Okay. So y'all want to meet Kate? <laughs> let's, let's visit with Kate. 
Round, round of hearts, round of hearts, round of hearts. Katie, thank you for being here. Hi. Hi. I'm so glad you're here. I'm really happy too. <laughs> it's so cool. So, y'all, we have a tiny shop, which if you ever get to come, you'll see. But we filled it with tables. <laughs> it's a beautiful shop. Oh. Gorgeous. <laughs> if I lived next door, I'd never leave here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we tried to put you to work. <laughs> So Kate, you, I'm gonna get out of your way a little bit. You brought some stuff to share, but let's start with a little bit like, how long have you been wet belting anyway? Let's see, I started in about 2010. Okay. And uh, I didn't start out um, making hats or anything. I started out mostly with small projects. Mm -hmm. Smaller hats, smaller scarves, smaller um, gloves, things like that. Yeah. And one day I just decided, I really like fantasy, and I kind of am getting into this hat thing. Why don't I try to make a wizard hat? And actually, my first hat that I made, it was kind of weird. And I was really glad when this couple, because I sold it at a craft fair, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad somebody bought that weird hat. <laughs> <laughs> and now you're like known for your hats. Like, yeah, it's kind crazy. Of taking over. Yes. But you really refined it and perfected it over yes. time. Because yes. we have one of your early, very early ones. Yes, very yes. early hats. And Anne likes to wear it whenever she can. I do. <laughs> she, she likes to wear it. And so the ones that we've seen from you now even go like bigger on the brims and yes. bigger back here and so the yes. ones we make this weekend they're going to be like that mm -hmm. so excited okay so tell us that's where you started wet felting yes and now you've been working on the hats what do you like if it's your day off right what do you really like just kate time what do you uh -huh. like to make uh well when i'm not making hats i really am into clothing right now okay i'm really wanting to work more with garments and uh, coats and i really want to do some eco felt uh, eco dyeing oh, onto yeah. the felt because i saw your piece in there mm -hmm. that's something i've been trying to do for a couple years now but i don't have time <laughs> oh i get it i know i i've had on my list to do more yes yeah. but definitely garments fantasy garments mm -hmm. oh so fun you see that charity is coming this summer no charity charity vandermeer is coming this summer and we're going to do like a three day Cool. Anyway, so now you brought some show and tell, so why don't I let you show and tell, okay. and I'll get out of the way and we'll see what questions people have for her. Well, it's a hi, Kate. <laughs> so uh, you saw the older hat that I made there, but this is actually one of the very first styles way back in 2010 that I started out with. It's just a very simple alpaca hat. So we go from this <laughs> to that to this. Yeah. <laughs> That's so cool. Give us a side profile. Look at that hat. Come in closer so everyone can see it. Cause there you go. Awesome. But this is a little large for me. But I'll put it right here so y'all can still see it. And uh, should I talk okay. about like the construction? Sure. Or? I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get ahead. So this is kind of my uh, birch bark uh, kind of look. Um, how I make this is. There's an under, uh, a tight under, a merino under layer, and then this top layer is just sort of a really coarse wool so that when it does felt, it kind of scrunches up with that bark-like texture. How I add the slits is when I'm laying it out, I lay the base layer out, and then I put like a popsicle stick actually, like one of those really short ones in there, and then I do the, the top layer, and when it felts, you know, it leaves that space, and then I cut them out, and then when I fool it, it you know tightens up the edges, and there you go. I'm gonna put her down so you can put, put your hat down on there if you want to. And um, so Kate, when you you say you put in the, the popsicle stick, mm -hmm. so you're felting with a sander. Yes. Mm hmm So they act like a resist. Mm hmm um, Yeah, as opposed to rolling. Like some of us would go, oh, I'm rolling, yes, but yes. the sander, you're just going straight down. Definitely, sanders are uh, my thing. <laughs> Uh, this one says, I love your work. Wow, very cool. Whimsy. I love the little curl on the tip. Um, Kate, how much does that hat weigh? How does it weigh? How much does it weigh? Gosh, I don't know. It's less than a pound. <laughs> it's very, very light. It's less it? than a pound. Yeah, can we weigh it? Yeah, sure. Go yeah. for it. Yeah. See if there's any questions for her, Anne. There is actually a question. Natasha wants to know, what do you use for shaping brands? Okay, so I'm a bit of a MacGyver, so I had to sort of figure out how to make the braid, like the wide brims that I make. And so you're never going to believe it, I use a garbage can lid. <laughs> what I do is I'll take the hat shaper and I'll attach the garbage can lid by cutting the hole out in the center, taking the silicone that you would use in like a bathroom to like seal it, and I 
take the garbage can lid, put it over, seal it with the silicone, fill in all the spaces, and put duct tape over the whole top. <laughs> Any other questions? Let's see. Not a lot of questions. Everybody is loving those hats. Cool. Yeah. Oh, did Marie tell you how much it weighed? 8.9 ounces. 8.9 ounces makes sense because I used about 8 um, ounces, 4 ounces for the underside and 4 ounces of hold for the top. Yeah, it's so awesome. Y'all, this is it. This is your only chance. I know some of you are asking, Kate, let me tell you what a common question is. Sure. Is about stiffness. People are always saying, how do I make my vessel stiffer? How do I make my hat stiffer? How do I make, so what are like, you know, your top two to three things for getting that, look how perfect that is. Well, the reason I brought this one in particular is because I know we're not using shellac, which is what I sometimes use for my more uh, gravity defined designs. But the reason <laughs> this one, is just literally, it's completely flexible, but at the same time it pops back into shape because it's thick. Yes. And I'm talking like, this is a thick piece. Yes. Um, I don't know if you can see how thick it is, but this is... Yep. Mm. But, uh, that's so it just when you... Uh, dense. Wool has a good memory too. So like when you're working with a really thick piece, you let it dry in the shape you want it to be, and then if it's a good thick piece, it will stay that way. Yes. I like that. That's a great tip. And going back to the popsicle sticks, yeah. Part, do you felt half at a time to hold the popsicle sticks in? No. What I'll do is I'll lay down the base layer, in this case the orange color, and then once the base layer is laid down over my resist, mm -hmm. okay, so there's like a double resist thing going on here, and then I'll put the popsicle sticks in place and then put the top layer on and then it's all nice and tucked in and then you very gently sand around where you know the pieces are. Awesome. And Kate wants, or Kate Williams wants to know how many layers of fiber for each part. Mm. Okay, so I don't usually work with top. I definitely almost exclusively work with batting, only because I make a lot of these, and so I have to do the quick layout, and that's why the batting is perfect because you just lay it out over the resist, you wrap it around, and I technically use between four and six ounces per hat. Um, so layers, uh, I can't give you that, but I can give you how much batting I use. Do you find that like when you're laying out the orange that that's, you just lay out one thickness on per side? Well, it depends or on how the, the bat, hole comes to Yes. Like mm -hmm. I do, you have to maintain an even amount of thickness. Yes. Otherwise you're going to have thin spots and folds. And that's actually kind of tricky to do, but with practice you'll get it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Jalen wants to know how many hours did that take you to make? <laughs> well, layout I would say took me about well, like the layout and then the grinding um, took me about three, um, and then once it was dry, I had to cut out uh, then the folding, of course, and I had to cut out the popsicle sticks and shape it. I would say a good six hours altogether. Mm hmm. Not counting setup and cleanup. No. <laughs> and the dry time for waiting in between. Oh, yeah. Leona wants to know, how did you get the tip to curl so nicely? Ah, yes. That's a question I get a lot. So, um, what I use, again, kind of MacGyvering things, is I'll take a wooden dowel, or anything, really, that has a round bit to it. Uh, sometimes I use a screwdriver, the, the back end of the screwdriver, and I'll wrap it around the screwdriver or the dowel, then I'll take a zip tie, one of the really small ones, and I'll you know, lace it through and then pull it. Don't use a, like a, a bobby pin, anything that's metal. I used to use those, but the water would rust them mm. as it sat there and then you get a rust stain on your work. So it has to be something that won't rust. So zip ties. Mm-hmm. Zip ties. Someone's asking about your shellac. Right. So the shellac I use is a uh, special shellac meant for stiffening felt especially. Um, I uh, get it from Hat Shapers, mm -hmm. and uh, basically it comes in a bunch of different sizes. I order like five pounds at once. Uh, you mix it with some alcohol, and it you know just dilutes, and then you spray it on the hat, and you let the hat dry. And once it's dry, it's nice and stiff. Mm -hmm. And it's got a different hand, right? It's got. A, does it smell at all? Um, I have a really low sense of smell, mm -hmm. but I'm not the best person to ask that. Mm -hmm. My husband has a really good sense of smell, though, and he hasn't ever complained. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's cool. Good to hear. 
Great. And Jean wants to know, do you ever needle felt any of your hats or do you wet felt them all? They are entirely wet felted. Uh, the only time I would use needle felting, and let me tell you, I've had actually a couple of accidents needle felting. One time I stuck a needle right through my finger and the little tip came out and I had to go to the hospital in the emergency room and they had to remove it. So I like needle felting. I just may not be the safest person. <laughs> I get a little too excited. So, but yeah, the only time I would needle felt is if um, between the felting stage and the folding stage, I wanted to add an intricate design to the brim. Mm -hmm. I would needle felt that on and wet it down and then it would be fold and then it would be wet felted into it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Thanks for sharing so much. Thank you. Okay. Um, <laughs> no, is she done? No, no wait, this yeah. is no, 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 we no. still have questions. Oh, <laughs> I'm back. Someone asked about the, the rainbow hat. I know they don't understand, yes. but you can tell them where the, hey, you know, that you bought the fibers that way. Okay, so how I made this one all those years ago was I had a great lady who would dye a uh, top for me. So I would get like four ounces of dye rainbow top. And I would lay out the base layer with the, I think, black on, the, on this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'd lay out the base layer. And actually, this is uh, your MC1, mm -hmm. your black MC1. And I would lay that out. And then I would take the, uh, the top and I would divide it into four. You know how, like, the colorway repeats? Yes. So there would be needing to be four colorway repeats. And I'd lay those out on top. But the way I do it now is I will make a white blank. I call them hat blanks. So it's like you take the shape of the resist, you wrap around white wool, you grind it, you felt it, you fold it. But then you have to dip dye it. Mm -hmm. And this is a little more complicated. So if you're a beginner and you want to make a rainbow hat, I would definitely suggest starting out with the dye top. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Alrighty. <laughs> and Penny wants to know, is it better to use coarse fiber for the hats or finer fiber? Well, definitely a softer fiber because it's going to be right next to your skin on your head. And a lot of people uh, really don't like the itchy wool. And so I try to use a micron no higher than 20. I prefer 18 or 19. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you've used our MC1 bats also. That's true. Oh, what's mm -hmm. your micron? 25. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, you know, it must be a lot softer then because I haven't <laughs> ever noticed a difference. Oh. <laughs> but then again, maybe my skin's not as sensitive. Oh, yeah. It's it's pretty soft. I mean, it, it can wet felt soft, but yeah, it's not like a 19. <laughs> I know. Mm. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Sherry wants to know if you use merino on the inside of the hat and a thicker wool on the outside, how do you get both to shrink at the same rate? Well, with this one, that's actually a great question because with this one, you almost want it to, I wanted to get that weird look where the inside was nice and tight, but the outside has this weird wrinkle look, and that's because they didn't shrink at the same rate. Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of like um, if you want a certain look, you compare those two, um, but that's only if you're trying to get a certain look. I guess I did it on purpose, but if you, if you didn't want that look, I would suggest using um, a coarser wool that was closer, as close as you could get to the inside wool. Mm -hmm. That way the shrink rate would be more the same. Mm -hmm. Can we bring that in up close one more time? Sure. So they can see the ripply part that we're talking about. So this, this reminds me of like when you put fiber on the back of habitai and habitai is kind of resistant to felting. So exactly. it bubbles and yes. puckers. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. But it has a cool effect. Uh-huh. And Cherie wants to know, does the shellac only stiffen the wool or does it waterproof it as well? Oh, that's such a good question. I get asked that so much. The, I mean, wool itself is naturally water resistant, um, but, the, okay, so like if I were making one of my hats, I would definitely not suggest they would wear them out like hiking or in a snowstorm or something <laughs> because, you know, they have that very gravity defined, like the tails go way out and they curl and you know, moisture is definitely going to cause them to wilt a little. So I, they're mostly costume pieces. The shellac will give it a little bit of water resistance. Nothing is ever waterproof though. It's very, um, very tricky. <laughs> you gotta be really kind to your hats. Humidity too will kill them. Mm -hmm. so Sherry asked again on, on that hat, what kind of wool did you use on the outside? This is actually just a blend from my local, uh, actually the Woolery, hey Woolery, <laughs> in Kentucky. Uh, it's just a blend of a bunch of different breeds. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it was just like a very coarse, like 25, 26 mm -hmm. uh, merino, and it just came as this giant coarse bat. 
and I thought it was the perfect color for like a tree branch bark mm -hmm. sort of look. So it yeah. looks like one of our colors, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Definitely. All right, and yes, we have a couple people asking about the rainbow hide again, about the, the, the how the resist would look or how you would get those ridges. Is I think the question. Um, okay, so. Basically, it's like you take a giant uh, triangle. Um, you would have, like I would, I would say I did about 40, 40 inches. Uh, so the resist is, uh, for resist material, this is actually important too. You wanna do something that um, is gonna be flexible but stiff, which is why Marie's, uh, what is it called, super? <laughs> we, super bubble? No, no the, the resist. resist. The resist. Um, yeah, do we have a special name for it? I don't think so, I think we just call it resist. Huh. Well, her yeah. resist material is actually yeah. really good for that because it's nice and thick, but it's also really flexible because it's hard to find where to fold. And sometimes if you have too thin, you'll fold it over onto itself and you'll lose the resist. So it's just basically a giant triangle. And you know, uh, the tutorial for how to make these includes the uh, resist pattern. So if you want to learn how to make them, it will be in there. <laughs> right. So we're going to have those up before the end of the week. Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. They'll be back. Kate's tutorials will be back. And, and they're new and improved, actually. That's why they left for a while. <laughs> right, I right. You were, them. you were working on them. So awesome. Very cool. What else? Anything else for Miss Kate? We're going to work her a lot over the next three days. Yeah. <laughs> Kate, well, we're just so excited to have you here. And thank you for sharing so much with everybody You're and welcome. being so generous. And so Kate's promised we're going to have her tutorial back on the website. It will be before the end of the week. So all y'all who can't be here and who have more specific questions about yeah. exactly her process, it's going to be in the tutorial, which it's still the cloche hat, right? Mm -hmm. And then the bigger wizard hat, yes. like this, this style. Yes. Anyway, yes, super cool. Okay, okay. thank you so much. Bye. Bye. <laughs> awesome, everybody. Big hearts for Kate. We are so excited. So I'm taking this class and very excited to learn from her and see what her tips and tricks are. And I think what we've decided to do is one day the hats are going to be made with our MC1 batting and merino top, and then another day with the um, short fiber merino bats and merino top. So we'll have more to share with you on that. And Okay, Natasha Red says thank you for all the answers and Leona Chu says thank you and Laura says love Kate's work. They're all fantabulous. Um, everyone just says thank you so much and wishing us all a great workshop. Very, very cool. Okay, cool. So let's see, what do I else do I have to show you? I want to show you all a couple of things. You all have been asking about the short fiber merino bats. And um, one thing that I really like about them is how smooth and tight of a finish they will get. And they do felt very fast, wet felt very fast. They're gonna wet felt faster than our MC1 batting. Just remember that generally speaking, the finer the fiber, the faster it's gonna felt. These bats are different in that they're not quite the same uniformity as our MC1. If you're used to working with our MC1, you're pretty much accustomed to getting a uniform thickness, a uniform loftiness. This fiber is very fine and very beautiful. So I brought in, this is, um, is this one lilac or larkspur? Primrose. Oh, primrose, yeah, I don't know, you know. We're gonna go through this again with a whole, a whole new line. So this is an example of how the bat looks when you get it. This is a four ounce bundle. It's very, very fine, and I'm gonna bring it up, up close for you to see. And it may have some thin spots, thin spots and thick spots, and that's one of the reasons Kate was saying, you know, she can't just tell you how many layers. She's figured out how thick something needs to be. And in this case, you might lay down this much or you might be able to lay down the whole thickness, you know. It just depends on what you're making. So we do want y'all to play with them. And I know some of you have asked us about offering them in smaller quantities and I have to say that just right now we just can't take it on because we manage so many fibers get broken down from big bundles to little bundles and assortments and stuff. But um, if you're keen on wet felting, that's what we'd recommend them for. Mm -hmm. Some of you have asked about needle felting with them, and what I'll say is 
If you want a needle felt with them, I would only consider them for like surface design, whether that's the top layer of something or surface design in a picture, because they're really fine. If you try and needle felt a ball or a 3D shape out of them, you're going to get frustrated because they just tend to want to... I don't know, they keep wanting to like come undone. Even when you use your fine needle, wants to go right through them. Your very coarse needles just are sort of pushed back. And um, it's interesting. But for surface design or something, they're, they're really fine. Some of you have asked about comparing them with our MC1 batting. And my encouragement is compare them with Merino Top versus MC1 batting. Think of, we always talk about the breed, the staple length, the micron and the process. A batting is just a method of processing fiber. You can buy really long, hairy, coarse bats, right, of like Icelandic. And they're not, they don't compare to this stuff at all. So all bats are not the same, just like all roving is not the same, you know, etc. But um, I do want you to look a little bit at the, at the staple length. And also notice um, just how wispy it is. I'll show you, let's see if we can see it up against a dark background. Does that show up? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's just like a little glimpse of, uh, you know, how whispery, ghostly thin it is. There's not a lot of crimp in there. This is really fine stuff. And my understanding is that the fiber is cut to process it into the batting. That's what's different about it over Merino top. It's very silky, very fine compared to like, um, let's look at a solid color of MC1. What's, you know, MC1, it's so easy to get this ghostly thin. I'll go on a light background. Can you see that, Anne? Yes. This is, see, notice how crimpy curly that is, if you can tell, as opposed to sort of long and a little more straight, the other ones are. And that's not as small as I can get it, right? You can, you can pull off the tiniest amount of MC1, which makes it really great for doing especially details. But it wet felt well, and I know that's one of the things y'all wanna know. So this hat is made with the short fiber merino bats in beaver, which seems to have been kind of a popular color. This is beaver, and this is how it wet felt. This hat, I think this hat is almost four ounces. Didn't I say? I made it like thick. It's, it's dense and it took a lot of effort to shrink it that much because the layers were so thick when I put them together. Um, but more that I came from a really tall, do you remember this resist? I meant to bring it in today. It's like really big and square. <laughs> and so it's like, it can almost be a bag. It can almost be a lunch bag. Um, but I want you to see how, can you see how thick that is? Do I need to get my background? We're trying background. Does that work? Can you see it? Yes. Okay, you see kind of how thick that is. It's not paper thin. This is definitely, these fibers were really scrunchied down. Um, and it wet felt really, really well. It'll make a nice tight finish. But let me show you a couple of other things that I've wet felted with it. Um, and one of the things that I love about it that definitely go outside the box. And one of them is um, sort of, the finish you can get on things that are that are wet felted. These, does that show up, Anne? Mm -hmm. Okay, these were just wet felted over wire. I may have put some core wool under there, I'm not sure. I was just playing with some surface design elements and wet felted some of these little fern stems and they just came together so fast and so easy. And I want you to notice just how smooth that finish is and, I, and it really, it just didn't take me any effort at all to get that finish. Now, these aren't rock hard. You can form a, a finish. Uh, they're, you know, they're kind of squishy. I don't know that I put core wool in here or what. But let me show you this little funky. Um, I'm doing a, like a surface design textural class in April here um, for a local guild. And this is all the, that batting. And what I like about it is how fun it is to do things like this, how quickly little things like this will come together. And um, these little bowls and such like that. So you can use it for wall hangings. You can use it for a hat. You could use it for a purse. I would not encourage you use it for an everyday wearable, unless like a purse or hat, unless you're going to hard felt it.
Do you agree? I do. The more short ends there are of a fiber, the more likely to pill. And so one of the first things I used this on was a tunic. Some of y'all seen my white tunic with the indigo inlays. And so that's soft belted to keep it drapey. Pills, horribly, <laughs> like awful, <laughs> just awful pill. So Kate's nodding her head over here. So we agree, you can use it for wet felting things that are wearables, but hard felted if you do, is if you soft felt it, it's gonna pill. And um, just for a couple of things, I showed you that up close. This is for people who don't know, these are not solid colors. I probably should have chose a solid color. This is MC1 wet felted, blue on one side, green on the other. It makes a pretty smooth finish. It's definitely, I don't know, you guys feel the, the softness. Like how would you compare if you rubber? My hands are so rough, like I can't. This is Merino top. Not hard felted, but well felted. What's the softness? They're gonna tell you how the softness feels. This one's the softest. Yeah, the yellow. And then this one is soft, but it's hard. You can feel it. Mm -hmm. and so they're saying the Merino top the merino top sample, this yellow sample, is softer. And I think the reason is it's because you have longer fibers mm -hmm. interweaving versus a bunch of short fibers coming together in something like this. But it's great for density, it's great for dimension because you get a real nice tight finish pretty fast. I think yes. they, they felt really fast. And then the MC1, you know, also produces, this is like a one ounce sample, produces a pretty nice stiffness. Sometimes it takes a little bit more elbow grease, but you can gain the satisfaction of having a semi-stiff fiber. The bats just, they felt pretty quickly, but they're not gonna felt as fast as the 19 micron bat. And Joanne Nogler asks, what do you mean by hard felt? I mean well felt. Like this is soft felted. This thing is, is soft felted. This is just Marie experimenting with shapes, trying to decide what I was going to teach. This is soft felted. There are places we could go through, pluck it apart if we wanted to. Um, and by hard felted, I mean like when you cut something, it's not going to fray. Yeah. So you can heal the edge, which is... Paula, we should ask you what, how you like to heal your edges. Um, Paula uh, has been having challenges healing her edges. And when you cut something and it's not fully felted, you can see the edges kind of want to come apart. You still do need to heal the edges, but by hard felted, I mean like it's done. It's right. Hard felted means it's finished. So the way to know how, what something, when something is hard felted is first to make a test sample wet felt it down and felt it till you just know that you can't felt it anymore. Make a small sample. We like to make six, eight, 10 inch samples. If you're not ready for that, make a palm size sample and just felt the heck out of that thing until you know you just can't shrink it anymore. That is your target for something being done all the way. That's not always your goal. If you're making a scarf, if you're making wrist warmers, you don't want them to be like bulletproof, right? You gotta be able to move, Kate's nodding. You gotta be able to move within them. Um, but if you want like a purse that you're gonna carry every day, you wanna felt it as good as you can so that it doesn't pill and that it holds up and it doesn't stretch out of shape. What do we got? Um, it's not great for you. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. So uh, like uh, I've worked with this wool for a while now and mm -hmm. I, I have found it's not great for uh, noodle felting with uh, fiber, uh, certain types of scarves mm -hmm. because of the short fiber. Like I would choose a top. Pills up on there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like it just doesn't want to go into because the fibers are so short. Mm -hmm. That's a great tip. Mm -hmm. So Kate says she's worked with it for a long time and it's not great for nano felting because, and what I've noticed too, is it tends to want to pill up. So it would need to be a really open weave. Yes. Right? Yes. So the opener weaves would be like a gauze mm -hmm. or our Uzbek silk. Um, but nonetheless, you have to really felt the fiber. So great tip. Not, not best for nano felting because of the short short ends. What do we got, Anne? And um, just going back to the whether or not something is hard felted, mm -hmm. Kimberly Pulley is asking, would your shrinkage rate alone tell you if it is hard felted? Mm -hmm. So if you receive the shrinkage rate that you're expecting, does, does that mean it's hard felting? Okay, and I was like, hey, well. You can feel the difference. Yeah, it's, it, I agree. I think it's gotta be palpable. You've gotta be able to know what that feels, what that feels like. It's great though to have that target. 
because if you know this fiber is going to shrink, um, like I was comparing two different types of pre-felt this weekend, one was very easy to get to a 60% shrinkage, whereas the other one I really had to work to get to, uh, um, uh, well, I said 60%, the other one like a 70%. I really had to work to get the other one to a 70%. So it's great to have that target in the first place, um, but I think that you're going to have to feel it and know what it feels like when it's done. And just remember, you know, one reminder that I like to offer is that first rinse, the first time you rinse something is really telling about the stage of your felt. Kate's nodding. I love that. I never had some of your nodding. I need that. She can just stay here. Here, come at me. Um, that first rinse is really telling. And if you're still not sure, you gotta rinse all the soap out because the soap acts like a glue and wants to hold everything together. If you're not sure, spin it dry, let it sit. You know, and if you're not sure, go back and felt it some more. Like I said, not everything needs to be hard felted, but sometimes that's what you really need. Depends on the purpose of the project. And Sherry and Paula both wanna know, can you over felt? I think like what we were just saying. So um, I've had friends, I'm glad it hasn't happened to me, who made wrist warmers and they felt them so hard that they couldn't move within them. Kate's laughing. You, you know, like it's just too stiff. Or like if you, if you made a scarf and it sticks up like a board, maybe that's not what you intended, you know? Use it for a, sew it into an eyeglass case or something. So it's possible to over felt something depending on the drape that you want, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. or to help cut down on the pills also I sometimes take a silk hanky and like layer it over the top of the uh, mm -hmm. the, the 90 microns and that kind of helps cut down on the pills oh how interesting because it almost acts like uh, a shield against it and then you have that sheen plus it gives it more flexibility because then you don't have to felt it down as hard how and so hot tip from Kate would you post that like Kate's hot tip says that she'll put a silk hanky over the top um Especially I have one arms. yeah this is this is a silk hanky right here within this so she's saying um that one of the things she does sometimes is puts a silk hanky on top it helps hold the fibers down with these short fibers and then you don't have to felt it so much Kate would you come up tell us how you like to heal an edge oh okay yeah yeah I'm gonna let Kate tell so some people have been asking us how do you heal an edge? Paola, I know in uh, Mexico, has been asking, so we'll let Kate tell us what she does. So I mostly work with the, the new fiber Marie has just been talking about. And I'm so excited she's carrying it now, beyond excited. Um, so when I do like my uh, hand warmers or my long gloves, you have to make a hole for the thumb. So I will take a bunch of soap after I cut the hole. And I always cut the hole extra small mm -hmm. because it's definitely gonna grow uh, as you begin to heal the edge. So I'll put a lot of soap on. I will literally take my fingers and I will rub that edge and I will just work on it, work on it. And then I'll rinse it because when you do rinse it, it really does show you if the edge has been healed or if it's still frayed. But it's just a lot of soap and a lot of rubbing and a lot of <laughs> And uh, yeah, then you rinse and you see if you need to do it some more. <laughs> good, good. Oh, I want to show this. Keep telling them, you use, I, you had mentioned the, the shellac and people are going to ask yes. about that. So. This is, let's show the hat shaper. Tell them a little bit about, we've shown them a few times, but go ahead. Yeah, the, these hat shapers, uh, they're from higher up. Yeah. Sorry about that, I'm new at this. <laughs> <laughs> so these hat shapers are great because not only are they really durable, they're waterproof, and I can, this little lip here, I extend the brim by uh, adding a garbage can lid, and this is the lip I extend it uh, from. Uh, so if you're really clever, you can uh, get these to be quite big. Any, what else do you want me to talk about them with? <laughs> yeah, maybe that's where you get your shellac from. Oh, right, yeah. So the Hat Shapers Company also sells uh, shellac, it sells shoe shapers, um, and the lady there, uh, her and her husband are really nice, and uh, they're very easy to communicate with, so if you need anything from them, let them take care of you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> very nice. <laughs> that's good. I think that was all I had, all right? Are there any more questions for Kate? Yeah, oh, that one fits her. It doesn't fit me. <laughs> if it fits you, it's probably too big for your head, right? It's probably a small then. <laughs> that one's a medium. Okay, good. Great. Thank you so much, Kate. Thank you. And thank you, everyone, for your question. I think that was all I had was I wanted to show the short fiber bats. 
Um, we do we have, have, go ahead. Gotten a couple of requests. Someone okay. wants to see how white the short fiber bats are. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. So Anne says someone wants to see how white the short fiber bats are. She's gonna bring that back. Anne, would you bring Lily? Bring Lily white with it? Yeah, perfect. So we're, we have a few different shades of white in our merino top. We have lily white. We recently added white sand, and we also have French vanilla. All three of those are whites. The natural, unadulterated white is French vanilla. You know, white, getting white requires more and more treatment, just like getting black requires more and more treatment. So if you are felting, wet felting, with a stark white, like our lily white, or a black, 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 like our ebony, then know that it may seem like it felt slower. Not all the time, but it might seem that way, and it's because it has to be so processed to get those extreme colors in place. So Anne is going to... Um, someone asked Kate, Debbie Penley says, would you use the short fiber bats if you like she says she's always wanting to break her fibers apart. Oh, Debbie, do you mean for needle felting? Thank you. Do you mean for needle felting or wet felting? Hmm. Okay, maybe maybe this will show up. This is French vanilla. Oh, that works perfectly. Okay, so this is the short fiber white. Now, let me show that this is with French vanilla. So I imagine those two are going to seem like close cousins. Mm -hmm. They look so natural white, batting, natural white, merino top. So then let me show you lily white. Lily white sometimes is brighter than this, but all together, can you see? Does that show the difference? Or are you coming closer? So lily white's much whiter, and white sand is actually in the middle of these two. Mm -hmm. So if you're trying to go with um, gradients or highlights, it's great to have a few different whites to work with. Yeah? Okay, what else do we have a request for? And Donna wants to see the chasing butterflies. Okay, so we have Donna who? Duda. Donna, hi Donna. Donna wanted to see our chasing butterflies uh, merino top pack, and this is an example. We try and be fairly consistent, you know, um, with the similar matching colors that are similar to the website. And so here you basically have three purples and three things that would be sort of pinks pinks or berries, and you get one ounce of each, and we call these our studio packs. So this is Chasing Butterflies. Thank you, Anne. Anything else? Um, Terry asks, do you rinse in hot water or cold, cold water? Oh, that's a great question, because different filters do different things. Some people consider, you know, the hot and the cold a shocking. I like both. What do you do? I, I technically do a lukewarm. She does, oh, she, you rinse in lukewarm. Yeah, because mm -hmm. I don't want to shock the fibers. She doesn't want to shock the fibers. So she rinses in lukewarm, and I think you're more repeating the same process over and over and over, and I'm felting just a variety a variety of things. Yeah. So I think you should find what works for you, and how does it impact the fibers. So Kate's saying she probably finishes with lukewarm because you're happy with the state of your hat, yes. and she doesn't want it to change. Um, and do you do vinegar soaks? I do. Yeah, vinegar soaks. And the reason you want to do the vinegar soak is to bring the fibers back to their natural pH. That's also going to make it feel softer and bring back the luster. So, yeah. Uh, and I do both. It depends on what I'm making. Totally. And quick tip, if you are yeah. going to use shellac after the vinegar soak on your hats, if you add the shellac, you'll want to rinse out all of the vinegar because oh. the shellac and the vinegar will have a reaction. Oh, hot tip from Kate. See, that's gotta be on the site somewhere. <laughs> well, we don't sell the shellac, so ask Carol Marston at Hat Shapers. As Kate mentioned, they're super nice people. You'll see that it's a little old school. You gotta order via email, but they're quick to respond. They're quick to ship. They'll send you a PayPal invoice to order. It's hatshapers.com. They sell the shellac. We're not gonna carry it because I just don't want to deal with the chemicals. You know, they've, they've figured this out and they know what they're doing. Uh, but Kate says, if you use the shellac and you do a vinegar rinse, you'll want to make sure you rinse out all the vinegar because the vinegar and the shellac would have a reaction. 
So I think that's all we have time for. We've got a big three days to get ready for. Some of y'all have Valentine's dates. The fairies are back. We're going to give away some prizes. So come on in, y'all. Thank you so much for spending time with us. Come on in. We're going to let Kate pick a prize. We're going to come. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like Kate, Kate pick a prize. So big hearts, I just want to say thank you so much to Kate for joining us. And everyone else, thank you for being here too. So Kate, this is all we do. You just got to pick a name out of it. Right? <laughs> Our first prize, uh, Sandra Blixen. Yay, Blixen. Sandra Blixen. Yay. Yay. Tell her what she's won, Anne. Come on oh, in. Let's, the, let's get in the frame so <laughs> Anne can be in there too. Yay. <laughs> okay, Sandra, you have won an MC1 goodie bag. Two 100% wool felt sheets and an iron on transfer pen. <laughs> <laughs> I love that Anne picked out all Valentine's colors for us today. Thank of you. Course. Pick another one? Yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> all right, we have Linda Broderson. <laughs> Yay! Congratulations, Linda. What does she win, Anne? She wins her choice of. Short. <laughs> Speaking today has been an adventure. Short fiber merino bags. There we go. Your color choice. So you can just email your color choice to customer service at livingfelt.com. Okay, so Pam, you pick one. All right. Because she's got the purple hair. <laughs> I wish I had that hair. Janet Kane. <laughs> Yay, Janet! Congratulations. Alrighty, Janet, you win one of our regular size resists, two ounces of merino top, and one ounce of merino silk blend. So cool! So Janet, just email customer service, let us know what colors you want. Everyone, have a great Valentine's Day. How do we feel about these people? Love you! <laughs> nice we, love. we appreciate you guys so much. Thank you for welcoming Kate. We're going to check in with you over the next few days with some live video and say hi. And we're going to do some BFF show and tells and more fun stuff. So we'll see you guys very soon. Have a great holiday. Bye.